What's up, everybody? We back. Another week, R2C2. What's good, bro? How are you, my friend? I feel like you've been all over the map. Bro, my life is fucking crazy right now. I have been all over. Um, But yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I'm chilling. Crazy in a good way or crazy in a somebody needs to stop this train way? Nah, crazy in a good way. You know what I'm saying? I'm still doing stuff that I like to do, but it's just, you know, I've been been all over. Um, I'm on my way to go see uh, Fergie Jenkins get his statue outside of Wrigley on Friday morning. Wow, um, man. Obviously, he's a black ace, you know what I'm saying? So I got to go support him. His Roots of uh, Fight line just came out. So if everybody listens to this podcast, go support that. So, um, yes, it's just, you know, little things like that. I was in uh, the minor leagues. I was down in Florida watching um, pitch clock games and ABS oh, games. Oh, wow. Which was the pitch clock games, man. It was crazy. I watched the Tampa Tarpons and I watched the uh, Dunning uh, Blue Jays play. It was the game that played in two hours and 10 minutes. And it was 24 strikeouts in the game because, like, the pitching was good. Like, it was a one nothing game. 24 Ks. You know what I'm saying? That's a lot of pitches thrown. <laughs> but the shit was in two hours, cuz. That's like, pretty it was, amazing. It was crazy. It was and crazy. Did it give you any different perspective on the pitch clock? Did it make you think, like, oh, we need this because this just makes I the think, sport that much more enjoyable? I think the pitch clock could work. I think the pitch clock could work. I think you'd have to make it a little longer. Uh, but I think the pitch clock would be a hitter problem more than a pitcher's problem. I think the hitters are going to get frustrated on how fast they get rushed to get back in the box. Okay, interesting. I think, I, I think minor league hitters, these young kids, you know what I'm saying, they don't they don't know any better. So if the rule is the rule, but if you get, you know, Bryce Harper, Frankie Lindor, or whoever, Soto, like he won't be able to do all that and then step out and do, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. it's so... Um, you know, some of the re- the older relievers, you know, you maybe you have to extend the clock a little more for that. And I would love to see them when a guy comes set, turn the clock off. Cause if, you know, if it's, if it's ticking down, the base runner can see it. And once it gets down to the bottom, you know, you only get two times to pick. And if you don't get them the third time, then it's a ball. So once it gets down to three, two, one, the guy can just time it up and take off. Mm. But, but I, but I really think it can work though. I really do. I really, really think that, uh, that this shit can help, man. I, I mean, you know, well, something to speed the games up. I, I mean, I even think with Pitchcom this season, we have seen games, I think, feel quicker this year in the majors because of it. Mm-hmm. And, and I just realized just even coming into my job and feeling like, okay, you know, knock on wood, it stays this way, but feeling like, okay, I feel like we're having more sub at three hour games than what I'm used to, you know? Yeah, and, which- and, and that's one way of doing it. So I can't imagine how good it feels if you're going to have something like a pitch clock, which is going to maybe shave 20 minutes off the average game. Yeah, and you know what? You know what else they had down there, too, was the ABS. So they had the ABS What's challenge. What's the ABS? The uh, automated balls and strikes. Oh, okay. Which is, But they had the challenge system down there, um, which I, I it was so you get the, each team gets three challenges a game. If you get the challenge right, you get to keep it. If you don't, then... Um, you know, then then it goes against you. Then you only have two challenges, whatever. You get down, whatever. Yeah. But I like that, man. Like, like you're challenging the balls and strikes? Or challenging you're... the balls and strikes. So the pitcher, the catcher, or the hitter can just do like this, and they challenge it super quick. And it's so fast. Like, it's like it's just like pitch comp. Like, they get it to them so quick, and then they change it, and then you just move on. But, okay, so you have an ump. That's calling balls and strikes, but yes. you can challenge the ump's calls. Yep. Wow, that's so, interesting. Right. So if you got a catcher that's really good of knowing the strike zone, then yeah. then he can, you know, he's going to be really good at it. If you got a catcher that don't know the strike zone, which most catchers should, but if you have a catcher that don't know the strike zone, then it's going to be tough for you. But I think if we, I think if, I mean, I think if 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 hitters see this, I think it's so fast. Yeah. But you can give each hitter one uh, challenge a, a game. I mean, a, a, at bat. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it's it's that fast. Like it's it's pretty cool. Like you're really you're not going to the monitor or anything, and if somebody's just like signaling from dola- below, like instantly, or signaling from behind the plate instantly. Instantly, like it's right yeah. in the, it's right in the umpire's ear. So it's not even like a. You, I mean, it's just. I mean, bro, it's just like they tap the thing, and it's just like boom. It takes longer when they get the challenge wrong. So the umpire has to write it down and like tell the team they only have two left. But like so, if 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 the catcher 
thinks a, a pitch is a strike and the umpire calls it a ball and, and the catcher gets it right, it's fucking five seconds, bro. Wow. It's really? Quick. It's quick. Wow. So it's not adding time. It's not adding any fucking time. Any Man. time. And you get and you getting to get the shit right. You know what well, I'm saying? Like maybe that's the way to do it. See, maybe maybe it's that rather than rather than the system calling every single pitch. Maybe it's hey, you have umps there, but you can then, challenge it. And what if judge can get one challenge in that bat? You know yeah. what I'm saying? If it's that fast. You know what I mean? Like or whoever else, you can get one challenge in that bat if it's that quick. Guys would, I mean, and, and you know, for the hitter, too, I mean, for the pitcher, too. You get one challenge in that bat. Like, it is what it is. And, and then it's also like, if you, if there is some system where, let's say, you're using challenges and you get to keep it if you're right, you lose it if you're wrong, then you're not as mad at a bad call that happens later because it's like, look, you could have had the ch- opportunity to deal with that bad call, but, I don't, you, I but don't, you use the challenge incorrectly. It's so fast that I don't like the I don't like the idea of losing challenges. I like the idea of having as many fucking challenges as possible. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but then aren't it's they just going to do it on every called pitch? I, I mean, if you just get one in that bat, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, no, but I'm saying if you literally are doing it like any pitch, it, I mean, rarely is a hitter going to accept a called strike, we'll I see, feel like. Well, see, I'm, I, I'm for the automated strike zone, so there you go. Okay, so that would be <laughs> but, but But can I just tell you? Oh, I'm, over, for, I'm, for it, I'm for it being fully automated is what I'm saying. And, and, and I, I'm totally open to that as well, see? And, but I think the thing that encourages me overall is baseball is in this place of creativity, of trial and error, right? They want, they know the game has issues that need solving, and they're trying to help the game evolve. I love that. And see, it seems like you are really active in your new role with MLB. This does not feel like some, you know, sort of token role. You are really immersed right now in Major League Baseball and and trying to help bridge the gap, right, between players and league, but also kind of fact-find on these things, it seems. Yeah, I mean, I guess I just love baseball. You know what I'm saying? So as, as much information as I can take in or be around or just listen and hear or try to help out, you know, I'm, I'm in on. So, you know, none of this stuff, like I said, it, just, it doesn't feel like a job. It's just like stuff that I like to do, and I'm just doing things naturally. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, once this, you know, for me, once it feels like a job, bro, you know I'm a quit. So, yeah. I, I, so like <laughs> now, I mean, I'm just, I'm, I'm just rolling with it, having fun, and just trying to learn as much as possible. Yeah, man. Well, that is, um, that's great, dude. That's great, and clearly, uh, it's obvious to see where you're bringing value to, which is awesome. I, I think it's really cool that you're getting to see this up close. I love that you got to experience the pitch clock. See, gives us some firsthand knowledge here on R two C two as well, which is great. Um, and I'm curious as this continues, how have you gotten any indication of how quickly, like, I mean, the pitch clock they're talking about next year in the majors, right? Oh, I don't know. I haven't, okay. you know, I don't, I don't know when they're talking about it in the big leagues, but yeah, I mean, I, I would definitely want to go see it at, at some higher leagues and, and, uh, just see how the older guys react, you know, cause when you're young and you know, you're 19, 20, you're new in the pro ball, the rules are the rules. So you will get, to, you, you adapt. When you're grandfathered in, when you old and you got some all star games and you know, you kind of stuck in your ways, you gotta, you know, we gotta see if these rules will work for them too. You know what I'm saying? I do. See, we have a lot of uh we wanted to do a little mailbag on this week's R two C two. We have a lot of great questions from people. Wanna dive into that. First, do wanna give a little um housekeeping note as well. Next Thursday is going to be our final episode with The Ringer. That partnership is coming to a close. Our thanks to everybody there uh, who has helped out over the last two years. We've really enjoyed it. Um, And the good news is, and I know we've been nomadic for our audience at times, and that can be frustrating because you've had to follow so many different feeds and you're unsubscribing and resubscribing. And we know that can be a real pain in the ass. But the good news is uh, we're going to be on the same RSS feed moving forward um, and same YouTube page. So it'll be the same recording cadence. So you're still going to get your episodes every Thursday. The only difference is all of a sudden you're going to see the ringer icon come off our logo, uh, you know, but you're still going to be able to get our podcast wherever you get them. Same normal recording cadence, same feed that you follow now. 
So nothing really changes for you, the consumer. The only thing that changes is um, who's producing uh, the pod for us. And we'll have more news about uh, the next landing spot soon. But just wanted to uh, share the audience that little housekeeping note. Um, C, a lot of good questions here. Um, Obviously, the Yankees have been playing just incredible baseball. But before we dive into that, Max Greenfield tweeted at us, how excited is CC to watch Little C play at Georgia Tech? Will he miss having him around the house? I think it's a perfect question to ask today because today is senior day and your son went yard on senior day, man. How fired up were you when he goes yard on senior day? Yeah, no, nah, it was a good day today. He got a chance to sign his uh, letter, you know, earlier today. It was senior day today for him for uh, for the high school. So, yeah, it was a good day. I'm, I'm excited for him, you know. Um, I'm ex- I, You know, I'm excited for for the rest of this high school season too, though. You know, they their team is... I feel like uh, peaking right now at the right time. They're getting some pitching back, and um, you know we'll see what happens here in the county in the state tournament. So uh, I'm excited for that. But yeah, I'm definitely excited to see him play in college. I think for me, um, you know, you just always want to see a kid get to the next level. Hmm. Um, you know, when it's little league, you just want to get to see him to play in high school. When it's high school, you know, you want to get to see him play in college. So. You know, it's just another uh, step in his journey. And I think uh, as a family, we're super excited for him to get down to Atlanta and get started. Ha- have you thought about what it'll be like not having him around the house all the time? Not to not to make you emotional here on R2C2C. Yeah, but- no, 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 no. I think, I, think, I think everybody's thought about that. But I think everybody's excited for him to, you know, uh, get down to Atlanta because I know every- he's excited. I think it's going to be hard. It's for Carter. I think Carter's mm-hmm. going to have the toughest time with uh, what Karsten leaves. And, you know, obviously that's his big brother, you know, but they're, they're seven years apart and, you know, Carson takes him everywhere. It takes care of him. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm looking, f- I mean, I, I guess I'm looking forward to that too, because I feel like me and Carter are get a lot closer, yeah. you know, once Karsten's gone too. So, um, you know, it's, it's all, it's all good. You know, it's, it's all good stuff. So uh, we're in a good spot right now. Well, since I know Carter is into Star Wars the way we are, let's take this question from Lord Sugarloaf, who tweets at us, with the Obi-Wan show coming out later this month, what Yankees player would be a Jedi Master and what Yankee player would be a Sith? Oh, man. I guess we'd do current team? Yeah, I guess we would, I guess we would do current team, I guess. Can, can I say who, I, who I'm going to say would be a Jedi Master on the current team? Who? John Carlos Stanton. I was about to say Big G too. Yeah, you were right. Like, yeah, I, I feel like he he has taught a master class on how to handle New York. Yep. Think about the scrutiny he was under coming here, the expectations, the struggles, the struggles in big moments, the way he has elevated above that, the way he's handled the media in those moments. You know, the way he answers questions, his honesty, the way he now thrives in the clutch. It's been a master class on how to keep your poise. Very Jedi like. It's 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 very Jedi like, and it's uh because it's easy to come here and fit in when you have success, right? Mm-hmm. Like like everybody always talk about how you know oh you came in and you know it was easy for you, but yeah, because we were fucking good and we were winning. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like we won right away, so obviously that takes a lot of stress off of you. You know what I'm saying? Big G came in at a, at a spot where we were expected to win a lot. He was expected to do a lot, and it and it didn't get off to the to the start that that we everybody thought. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? And once that happens in New York, most of the time with the Yankees, shit crushes you. No Snowball. matter who you are, yeah, no matter who you are, you can never dig yourself out of that. And I think you know he's fucking dug himself out of that, and like you said, taught a masterclass in how to come to New York and deal with the pressure of the pinstripes and have failure at the beginning and be able to dig yourself out of that shit. I How think about- him I think him and Didi. Didi was the same way. Mm, yeah. That's a Didi great point. was the same way. And then he thrived in some very big moments as yeah. well. Ha- see, how about just I mean the thing I love just watching this Yankee team right now is they just find a different way to win every night. I mean uh, yes, Judge and Stanton have been mashing like crazy. The pitching has been sensational. The pitching has been has been ridiculous. Ridiculous. I mean, <laughs> and, and, and even offensively, 
they find a lot of different ways to win. They're using their legs, taking the extra base, stolen bases. I know the Castro's down now, but he had some key stolen bases coming into pinch run. You have Donaldson on base in 24 straight games. Hey, you have Glaber big hits. You know what? You know what I feel like Yankee fans, and I feel like we how we should feel as a fan base. Yeah, is I, I feel like we we we've been heard. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like we wanted more athletes, we wanted more action, we wanted more shit, and that's what we got. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And so there's nothing really to complain complain about as a fan base right now because yeah. everything that we've been saying that this team wasn't, it is right now. That was perfectly put. Like if we're gonna do a a a, a quick social media breakout from this episode, if Talking Yanks <laughs> is gonna is gonna look at R2C2 or John Boy is gonna look at R2C2 and say, hey. That's the bite. That's that's it, because you're so right. See, that's the succinct way of putting it. And how much more pleasing is it to the eye? Like, when you take away the station to station, and the team has a good vibe, I don't know what you're hearing, see, but I'm hearing that the chemistry right now feels special, the way the guys are getting along, hanging out together off the field. It, it, it really, I mean, it's a fun watch night in and night out right now on Yes, watching this team. Yeah, it's definitely it's it's definitely getting to be like must see. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, ha like one of those those moments where I just think about like, damn, that that could be like a moment that you see all the time was Judge hitting that ball in the upper deck. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? The, the, the walk off against the Blue Jays. Yeah, it's early in the season, but I just think about like you know some of Milky's early walk offs in 2009. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like some shit that like. You know, Glaber's walk-offs. Like, this team is very reminiscent to to teams that win championships. You know what I'm saying? I know it's early and whatever it is, but, yeah, I mean, I, I can see it. And it's getting it's getting to one of those situations where you got to watch the shit every night because, you, you know, you're going to see something pretty cool. You know, championship teams, they usually feel like championship teams for stretches or moments throughout the season, right? Like, you usually at some point are like, yeah, you know what? This this feels like it could be. It's one of the things I was juggling with the Nets. See, as I as I continue to try and shoehorn the idea of them flipping a switch in the postseason, I kept thinking nothing about this season has felt like a championship team. You know, yeah. whereas with this Yankee team, and granted, there is a mile and you know a half to go, and I'm under shooting it. Yeah, all of that shit. Yeah, yeah. but but the season, at least up through the thirty, you know, six thirty seven games. It feels like the start of a championship season. Doesn't mean it's going to be, but it has that feel. Yeah, no, nah, no doubt. And I mean, you know, like you said, I mean, it, it you can feel it early in those teams. But the, the thing about I think I'm excited about is that this core has never played this good for any stretch that we that they've been together since 2016, 17, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like. The, the core or, or the, the, you know, the core of this team, nobody's, they've never played this good for this long. Mm -hmm. So um, that's what's different to me. Well, you said it, see, um, before the season, you're like, hey, I want to see the Yankees go out and beat up on teams the way they're supposed to and kind yeah, of intimidate. Yeah. 10 4 games, 12 3 yeah. games. You know what I'm saying? And we're getting those. Yeah. You know what I yep. mean? Like, yep. I mean, you know, everybody would talk about going into Baltimore. You got to beat up on Baltimore, but fucking, it's not three to two. Is not beating up on Baltimore, motherfucker. <laughs> right? They are. They are absolutely in that kind of a groove. I also think, see, like as a as a fan, as someone who covers the team as well, you know, you can always, and I know fans who who follow the Yankees feel this, or or any team, you can always sort of like have a sense of just you know you're going to watch the game that night and your team's just going to win, right? Like where you're just like, yeah, no, I, I know. And they're in a place right now where it's just like, you yeah, know, I don't know how it's going to happen, but yeah, they're going to find a way to win tonight. They're in one of those grooves. Is that something you feel in the clubhouse, see, when you're on a team that's really good, that's in a groove where you're just like, you literally are taking the field knowing we are going to win tonight? Every night. Absolutely. You, fe you feel it. Yeah. I mean, you yeah. know when you're fucking good, Cass. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like you know yeah. when a team is good. Like so, yeah. I mean, they're, they're, and and it's not there. There's never a night when you're on a good team. There's never a night that you don't think you're gonna win the game. Yeah, and the other team know that shit too. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, like the other team can feel that shit too. 
Like, yeah. fuck, like we got to get through this lineup. Like, yeah, yeah, no, this is going to be a fucked up four days in in in, in New York City, guys. <laughs> you might as well just go shopping and get comfortable in and, and take a bite out of the <sighs> apple because when you come to the stadium, it's just going to be some ass whoopings. <laughs> <laughs> I like this tweet from J. Keith for real. He says, hey, C, I'm sure you would have you've noticed the elite defense Trevino has been pray, playing in New York this season. How valuable was it for you to have an elite defensive catcher behind the plate? And who would you say is the best defensive catcher you work with during your career? Man, can, can I say this uh, without trying to like piss my any of my catchers off yeah yeah i think you could say because i know you value a lot of them i love all of my catchers like literally yeah. all of them like all of them to death whether it's victor martinez or jorge or whoever but i don't i mean the only person i would say that was elite defender was russell martin mm, interesting the i mean the, the other guys were offensive catchers yeah you know what i'm saying whether it was vic sato mac i mean mac was really good too yeah but but I mean, I, you know, I, and that's why, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I, I would have to say Russ was the mm. best. Um, no, I mean, or, or Savelli. Savelli was, was, was really, really good. Yeah. But I had good chemistry with all of them. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So um, I know that's going to piss off. I mean, if, if Sato hears this, it'll piss him off. But <laughs> he was an elite defensive catcher. You know what I'm saying? Like, he was yeah. an offensive catcher. Vic was an offensive catcher. Right. Um, so I think I think it would have been Russ. Yeah. Oh, and that's not to say you didn't value those guys. No, the I mean, you I, love I, them by I the love play. throwing to them. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah. I had my best seasons in my career. Won the Cy Young with Vic, and I won 21 games with Jorge. Yeah. But I understand exactly what you're saying. Does it make a big difference, C? Like, to, to the other uh, question that's being asked there, like, man, when, when, you, I, when you have a great defensive catcher? Man, like, the days of that, that Cervelli was catching me or... If I got Molina, it was just like a day off for me. Wow. Because I could just throw. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, it wasn't any extra thinking like, damn, should I throw this? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. When, when you got a guy back there that you know is controlling the game, it's like, oh, shit. Like, I don't have to think through this game. Like, yeah. and, and Russ was like that. Mm. Russ was like that. Um, Cervelli, Cervelli was really like that a lot, too. And me and Cervelli... So me and Cervelli hit it off right away. Like, his very first game that he caught me, um, his very first game in the big leagues, he started, he caught me, and you know, I, I threw a, 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 a shutout. Uh, well, complete game, shutout. Sir, from uh, Francisco? Was yeah. For his, wow. Yeah. Um, this question, uh, Pat in the hat uh, wants to know, who in the game today reminds you the most of you as a pitcher, not look necessarily, but style and pitching ability. Hmm. Man. What's that kid for the Rays? Uh, uh, McClanahan? Oh, yeah. Yep. Him? Yeah. yeah. All right. That's a good one. I like that. Um, I, there was another. Oh, I like this one. Susan G asked, do you think Labor is hitting better because he's fielding better at second or because of the birth of his son? Do your kid's birth affect you on the field, see? Yeah, I mean, my kid's birth always affected me on the field. I mean, it just gives you an outlet. I know that sounds crazy, but it gives you, like, perspective in that, like, this shit really don't matter. You mm. know what I'm saying? Like, you, it, it puts it back in perspective where it turns baseball back into a game. And it, and it, and it just lets you um, just go out and enjoy it. You know what I'm saying? And, and then go home, and then that's when it's really – you know, the serious time when you, I mean, you know, you just became a yeah. dad and yeah. you know how, how, how valuable that time is that you get to spend alone with the baby or hang out. Like that changes your whole perspective and it changes your outlook on baseball. So yeah, I think it, I think him being comfortable back at second base, um, the birth of his kid, absolutely. And the lineup, everybody's hitting, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So there's no pressure on him to, you know, go out and, and put up these astronomical numbers. And I think, when he first came up, that's that's was the situation, and that's why he was up, able, able to go out and hit thirty eight. That's a great point about how different it became then once those expectations were there and other people weren't hitting. I think the other thing that's really stood out to me, you, you know, you talk about how he doesn't have that pressure on him anymore offensively. He also, I mean, he's going to right field just so consistently, right? That's when we see him at his best, and 
I remember talking to him in late April when he started to turn it around a little bit. And he said he got back to, he said he was just, you know, rolling over too much. And he got back to just trying to make contact to right field. And you could see that sometimes, right? Where he's almost like flat footed, just kind of flicking the ball to right field, but he's doing so with great success. Yeah, no, I mean, I think that was uh, such a huge part of his success early in his career. And he, you know, we've seen, we've seen him get away from that. Same thing with Gary Sanchez. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. Um, so, you know, to see these guys get back to what, you know, got them, made them their name, you know what I'm saying, uh, is good. So that's, that's good for Glaber. What do you think of Michael King? He's a starter. His stuff is <laughs> disgusting, bro. His stuff is disgusting. I mean, and, and, and at a time when, you know, everybody went, you know, four seamer top of the zone, high, high spin rate. You know, he's sinker slider. Like, he's just carving guys up because they don't have the swing for what he throws. Mm. That You know what's interesting about that, see? Remember Walker Bueller talked to us about that and how part of the reason why he thought the Dodgers had success was they kind of... Blake Trinan and all yeah, these different guys. They, yeah. they got ahead of the trend, and, and so King has kind of done that as well, I guess. Well, the Yankees have done that. You know what I'm saying? By, by, by bringing Holmes. him up. Clay Holmes, yeah. Yeah, I think you're seeing some of these teams uh, start. I mean, and and again, I think with the pitch clock and the velo- and, the, and the game speeding up, I think you know velocity is going to be down. It's going to be harder to to just keep living with four seamers up in the zone. So I think sinker slider guys are going to come back. One other thing I want to ask you about: see, everybody on the Yankee staff is throwing a cutter now. If they didn't have one, now they do. If they did, now they're throwing it more. What do you make about the overall increased use of the cutter? And we're seeing it across baseball, but we're really seeing it with this Yankee staff. Man, I think I think uh, you know it's just it's it's a pitch that that really works if you can throw it. I mean, obviously, it extended my career for you know five, six, four or five years or whatever it did. Um, but I, but I think uh, you know I, I think there's trends. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. there's years and you know four or five years in a row where everybody's throwing a split. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And so it's just, it's one of those things where, you know, if you can teach it the right way, um, it could be a real asset. And and the Yankees have seen to found that, find that. What is, see, is there a big difference between the cutter and the slider? Oh yeah. Huge difference. Yeah. What, it's because I was talking with uh, Flaherty about it yesterday and he was saying it impresses him when guys can throw both and throw both well. Uh, just because, you know, I, I guess in some ways, if you're, you know, how, like a lot of times it's talk about like if you have multiple off speed pitches, being able to hone all of them at the same time. Yeah, but a cutter's not an off speed pitch though. Yeah, cutter's but, a fastball. Right, but it has the same sort of movement as a slider. No, it don't though, but because it's this this big, it's just you know smaller. What I'm it's yeah. it's just that much. Like slider. I mean, you know, my slider would move this much, whatever. Like, I could get yeah. it to move this much, this much, how, whatever. But the cutter, you just want that shit to move just this much, cuz. Like, all you need is just this much off the barrel. So, the guys that throw the, the, the bigger cutters, I mean, they don't, you don't need that. Like, you just, it's just that much. And the more velocity that you can keep on it, the better. How much different is the grip between cutter and slider? Oh, it's different. It's completely different. Yeah. Yeah. Are you breaking I, your, you're breaking your wrist differently too? Um some guys some guys uh preset their wrist on their on their cutter. I never did. Um When you say preset uh, your wrist, what do you mean? Like where they would just cock, you know what I'm saying? Like Oh, they're they, like cocking the baseball in their already, hand and already cocked it like that. Gotcha. Like for me, I was uh I didn't need to do that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like you know how I am like if you show me something I can do it like yeah. so uh one day Mo was like you know, just throw it like a football. And I was like, oh, shit, that makes fucking sense. So I just I just threw it like how I would throw a fucking football. You know what wow. I'm saying? Like, that's how I threw my cutter. Like, that's what I would think in my head is like I was throwing a fucking football. And, and Mariano Rivera taught you that? Well, he just said it. You know what I'm saying? Like, he just said it like that. And he didn't really, like, it was just one of a phrase that he just, like, you know, like, if you're throwing a football, throw it like that. Like, he was just throwing shit out there for me to, like, try to grasp. And that was the best thing that I could grasp. And that was the easiest thing for me. I was like, all right, that's easy. Would I can you, do that. Would you so, think that every time you would throw yeah, it? Yeah. So, so I would like, yes, yeah, it's, it's hard to explain how, how, I, uh, how I visualized it. 
You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's it's kind of hard to explain it. But yeah, it was it was more like my slider was more I was throwing a third of the ball. The cutter, I was throwing more a half of the ball. Mm-hmm. That's the only okay. way I can explain that. That's so with, interesting. With the grip. So with yeah. the grip, if I was throwing a slider, I only had the, a third of the ball. When I was throwing a cutter, I had half of the ball in my hand and I was fucking throwing it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Got you. That you makes sense. Me. Yeah. I love I love the thought process behind and, that. And, that's, and that's the difference between a cutter and a slider. And that's the difference in the velocity. And yeah. that's the difference in the movement. So a cutter is a fastball. Mm. That is um, a great breakdown of it. See, I love that. I um, Before we get out of here, see, I did want to... Uh, dive into uh two things with you first of all how stoked are you for the obi-wan series beginning next thursday man man i'm excited but listen it's a lot of good fucking tv shows on right now bro yeah true true or i should say next friday it comes out i know it's a bit is it do you watch hacks on hbo i watch hacks yeah Um, i love hacks but i've been watching like halo never seen paramount plus i've been watching that shit um I'm watching some shit on Showtime called The Man Who Fell to Earth. That shit is pretty good. Man, uh, you watch, you watch bro, everything. It's I unbelievable. Watch every, I'm, back, I'm back to watching everything because I've been traveling a lot. Yeah. So I'm, have you seen The Offer? No. Oh, man. It's on Paramount Plus. It's about the making of The Godfather. Oh, I've heard. Is it? And that's my favorite movie. Yo. That's my top two favorite can, movies can of part I, two. Can I, can, I, can, I, can I give you a confession? Yeah. I've never seen The Godfather, cuz. Stop it. Swear no. to God. I've See? never I've never seen The Godfather. Cause. Is that going to change after The Offer? Yeah, I, I'm going to watch this season of The Offer, and then I have to watch it because this show is fucking phenomenal. Is it? Okay, I got to see it. My, you need to get Paramount Plus, bro. I'm going to keep a, telling you that. Uh, apparently, you're its biggest champion. I hope they're paying they, you. Well, I'm just, they have all the good shows. I got to, I have to check it out. I think I did sign up for it for something. And I don't remember what the something was. They got Champions was. League soccer, too. Maybe it was soccer. Maybe it was. I will. Okay, the offer. Andrea told me about that. She was like, oh, you know the they're offer, doing a show cause. on this. Wow, I got to do it. You, the by the way, fire. C, you are going to love The Godfather, man. You are I know. Gonna, I heard. I, yeah. I'm, I'm excited. Yeah. But watching this, yeah. I think I'm appreciating it even more. You will. I'm sure you will. Without yeah. even having seen the offer, I mean, I'm sure you will. Did you, uh, you loved Winning Time. I thought it was I eh. loved Winning Time. I, I thought it was eh. It was good. You know what I'm saying? It was entertaining, it, no? It was entertaining. It got a little cheesy at times, like, but it was good, though. But you, you know I love cheese. Yeah, I, it was I, I, It was I, like, I was like, Jesus, this is I, crazy. I, I, but it, I, I mean, I thought it, it was good. No, it's I, funny. I, I'm watching Did, Magic's doc right now, too. Oh, yeah. I've heard that's, uh, I've heard that's good as well. Um, I, uh, the other day here, we'll get a little R2C2, uh, personality friendship insight. I sent you what, what's an incredible article in Vanity Fair going into like this it, really in detail, yeah. this, ne- this yeah. next wave of series. It's long as hell though. Is that, the, will you read that article? Are you like, or you see that you're like, this dude's sending me this. I'm no, no, no. This. I'll, I'll read that article, especially if yeah. it's got, uh, got a lot to do with TV. You know what I'm yeah. saying? You know, I'll watch yeah. that. Sh- I'll read that shit for sure. It, it does. It, it kind of sets up all the upcoming Star Wars series, which we're getting three within the next 12 months. So, uh, yeah, it's it, it's a terrific article. Great insight on what's coming on Disney+. Plus. It's really good, man. Me I just, sh- I just sh- finished uh, Billions. Oh, me too, man. What you season, think? Uh, what season was that? Was it season six? Season six? six? Yeah. Yeah, season six. I really fucking hate uh what's the prosecutor's name? Chuck Rhodes. Like yeah. I like I hate his character. Like I don't think I could watch the show anymore. <laughs> like I really fucking hate that guy. You're done with it. We're gonna have to tell Brian Koppelman you feel this But way. just like the like the whole like the fucking every time he speaks us in riddles and like he's always gotta do a monologue and stand like shut the fuck up, guy. <laughs> Like, maybe that should have been what your guest appearance was. Fuck. Oh. Just slapping the shit out of him. <laughs> bring me back. Tell Koppelman, Koppelman, bring me back so I can slap the shit out of Chuck Rose, bro. <laughs> Fuck this guy. Uh, I actually, I love the way he talks, but I hear you. I thought. You would love the way he talked. I, I got to tell you, I love people who talk in riddles. I really do. Motherfucker speaks in riddles, bro, all day. Like, yeah. what the fuck is he talking about? I, I would prefer. If everybody in my life spoke in a riddle, if I woke up in the morning <laughs> and, and Andrea was like, 
Will there will there be an egg in the pan, or will the toast finally come to roost? And I'm trying to figure <laughs> out what is this. What does this mean? The fuck is she talking about? Yeah, exactly, exactly. I I call my dad and. And he's like, is today the day or will the sun shine once again? And I'm like, what is he talking about? I like, I, I would love to live this life. Now, Chuck nah, Rhodes' riddles man. are a lot better than these ones I've just laid out for us. But Fucking Chuck Rhodes, bro. I'm going to punch Chuck this Rhodes. guy if I ever see him. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hope someone picks up on that clip, too. Um, all right. <laughs> Let, last thing. See, NBA conference uh, finals, Heat, Celtics. Um, Celtics and Warriors that, finals, bro. Big Celtics Warriors finals. Yeah. I, you know, I think the Warriors will win. I did that game six in Golden State, which was, oh, it was so fun, man. The atmosphere there. Memphis Memphis made it a game despite not you, having you a think, job. You think the, the Warriors should, should beat the Dallas, right? They should. Yes, they should. But I do think one thing that's a little underrated about their circumstances they're right now down three rotation players. They you know, are. Like, yeah. So, and, and in the playoffs, you only trust. Now, the Warriors are deep, but you only trust but so many guys. And yeah. it's so funny how many guys help you in the regular season, and then you just can't play them in the playoffs, or you can only play them, you know, five minutes, and you're, like, holding your breath during those five minutes in the playoffs. You end up realizing that, right? Like, what guys work that for you, you can- in the regular season in the playoffs, you just can't, you know? Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I don't know. I didn't see what the deal is with Porter, but he's a huge player for them. Obviously, Gary Payton the second, not having him is huge. Uh, even Iguodala and his injury. So, yeah, I have some concern there with their depth. I, I, think, th- I think both go in seven games, though. You think so? Yeah. Wow. I, I think Miami is going to find a way to beat Boston. I think the COVID thing with Boston. By the way, has Al, For- Al Horford now had COVID Three, Three times, times within the, in one within, basketball season. See now, see, I'm a, I'm going to say something that people are going to they're going to think this is um th- this is like insensitive to the situation, and you know it's not because uh, you know how seriously I've taken COVID from jump. But like we're evolving to a place where they're they're going to stop. They they're, they're going to stop. You know, uh, having guys sit out games and testing all together and whatnot because. The virus is evolving as such that one, thank God, because of prior immunity, it's usually very mild, right? Two, you're being reinfected multiple times, regardless of you know your immunity status and everything else. It's just going to become untenable to have people missing, you know, ten days, three different times. I mean, just think about if you tell people, hey, you got to miss work for a full month. And they're sitting at home being like, I feel good enough to work. Why can't I be there? You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I, I, I just feel like I, I feel like, you, you know, as happens with all, you know, uh, viruses, eventually, I feel like we are going to evolve to that place where it's like you treat it like, you know, I- unless you have your own individual circumstances, which are something you have to account for. You kind of you kind of keep the train moving because. I just think I, I think we're gonna evolve to that place because of what we're seeing right now. Like this dude's had to miss time three times this year. It's one three thing, times. You, and I don't know how ill he is, um, but a lot of times you have guys sitting at home like they're not feeling that bad, and they just can't play. Obviously, so uh, point being, the spread is inevitable at this point. It's so contagious, and the world is open up that I I don't know, man. I think that uh, that that might happen, but because of this, I think that the Celtics. Are, I think they're in a little more trouble um, than I realized. I also think this is Jimmy Butler's moment in some ways. See, people are starting to realize just how ridiculous this guy is at this time of year as a two way player. Like, Jimmy Butler is a winning big time player when it comes to this time of year. He is, man. And, and I think everybody, uh, you know, gets surprised or, you know, get reminded and, in, in, you know, these big time situations, you know how good Jimmy Butler is, and how uh, much he can will a team to win. Mm-hmm. And you can't have guys like it's hard to have guys on the floor who are zeros defensively at this time of year. Oh man! A- and so when you have a two way guy, yo, who's well, a- speaking of, of people being zeros on the floor, like what about Pat Beverly just going in on Chris Paul, bro? Uh, to me, that was clownish behavior. 
Jeez, from, 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 I was from like, Pat Beverly. I mean, come I, on, dog. And, and, and honestly, I, to me, I just don't have the appetite. I know people are like, oh, this is so entertaining. To me, that it, shit ain't entertaining, cuz. No, no. It's, 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 it's honestly, it's, to me, it's insulting to the audience. You have a guy who clearly has an agenda. Clearly, clearly. And we're giving him a platform and trying to endow him with credibility when he is just using the platform to basically fulfill his mission, which is to tear down Chris Paul for whatever reason. And and I'm sorry, Patrick Beverly, as good as he is at his role, he will never know what it's like to carry a franchise. He will never know what it's like to be an NBA player and face the kind of expectations and night in, night out scrutiny that Chris Paul does. Nobody is ever looking at Patrick Beverly and saying, that guy never won a finals or that guy never got. Nobody is ever doing that because the dude can't get buckets. Okay. He's great at what he does. Great. He is a piece on a winning team and he can be a really good piece. But when it comes to the NBA and being a top basketball player, it is a, an extraordinary level of pressure. See, it's much like being a quarterback in football, okay? Where it's like, okay, yeah, you put up the stats. I mean, think about what Dan Marino did in his career, but we're always going to think within the first two sentences, yeah, but he never won a Super Bowl, He never right? won a Super Bowl, yeah. Like Patrick Beverly, nobody's ever going to say, yeah, but he never won an NBA Finals because nobody's ever going to expect him to. So I have a real problem with the way he goes in on a guy like Chris Paul because he will never know what it's like to walk in Chris Paul's shoes, even if he's great at the role that he does occupy on an NBA floor. Yeah, I think I think I mean you can you could even throw as far as it, with the with that would compare to in baseball as being a frontline starter. Yeah, you know what I'm saying, like Garrett Cole money or Max yeah. Serger money or, or you or you or Degrom or me or whoever else is in that situation where you're making enough money that these motherfuckers expect you to win every single time you go out. Yes, you know that's a, that's a different level of expectation of of you know, what you what you drive to the park with or what you drive to the arena with or, you know, what, what you show up to the locker room, what you carry in is a lot different than, you know, what some guys next to you are, for sure. 100%. All right, I got Heat Warriors in the finals. You got Celtics Warriors. Yep. Um, really interested to see how these conference finals play out. Uh, Boy, you guys didn't I jump back on my Warriors train at the right hey, time? Man, Jesus. Hey. Hey, hey, I can uh, never lose in this basketball <laughs> shit, bro. Ever. I'm telling you. <laughs> it's, a, it's a rigged game for Carson Charles <laughs> Sabathia. It's a rigged game. My goodness. You guys know the deal. New episodes every Thursday. Bonus episodes as well. You could follow us wherever you get your podcasts. Apple, Stitcher, Spotify. It does not matter. Uh, make sure you're also checking out our YouTube page. We're going to be having the full episodes up there. So remember, you know, even though our relationship with The Ringer is ending next Thursday, nothing is changing for you, the consumer. We're still going to be recording every Thursday. You're going to get a new episode, same RSS feed you're subscribed to, same YouTube page. So nothing really changes for you. Uh, it's just kind of behind the scenes stuff that changes for us. Uh, along those lines, big thanks to our producer, Bobby Wagner. It's going to be a shame we can't steal him with us. This dude is fantastic, a rising star at The Ringer. We absolutely love him. Um, and uh, huge thanks as always to Sadie Zillow, who, of course, she's going to go wherever we go. We know that. So uh, big, big ups to our amazing crew. And um, see, we'll do it again next week, my man. I think we got a special one coming from Yankee Stadium in the works. So people got to be stay tuned for that for next uh, next Thursday. Peace, my man. Peace.